welcome to It's Time to Call Your Mobile Devs. My name is Ariel and I'm a product security engineer at Twilio Segment and I'm based out of San Francisco. I started my career as a penetration tester and worked primarily on web and mobile security pen tests. Then I made the switch from pen testing to AppSec and joined a healthcare company in which I worked on the mobile security program. This talk pulls from my experience securing a mobile healthcare application and working with the developers working really hard to secure patient health information. My fun fact is that I'm dressing up as a bison for Halloween. Today's agenda is pretty straightforward. We're going to answer two questions. One, why should you care about mobile security? And two, hopefully convince you to care, then we'll answer how you would go about building a mobile security program. Let's dive into the content. Why should you care? You've got plenty of problems. Web app alone has a lot going on. Now there's cloud and API security. No one on your team is bringing up mobile security. Compliance hasn't come knocking down your door. Your CISO hasn't mentioned anything. It's truly the wild, wild west for your mobile developers. Most importantly, you haven't really had a call to action because your mobile apps haven't been breached yet. Mobile traffic is continuing to rise. This graph shows web traffic from mobile devices in green and desktop traffic in blue throughout the past decade. As of July 2021, 57% of all web traffic comes from mobile phones. In fact, web traffic from desktops has been dropping as mobile traffic keeps rising. This is what our current mobile landscape looks like. Mobile has become our platform of choice. It's no secret that we use our phones for everything. You take photos and videos, you store important documents, you send and receive money, you track your workouts and your health, you communicate with your coworkers, family, and friends. As our lives are lived in our mobile phones, the perception of how secure the data on our mobile phones raises a lot of concerns. McAfee found that 58% of US consumers said they either do not know or do not feel secure when it comes to their mobile security. I want you to take a few seconds to think about your perception of your mobile security. How much sensitive data are you giving your mobile apps and what would happen if an app was compromised or your device was stolen? Mobile traffic is on the rise. Consumers aren't too concerned about their mobile security. So mobile attackers are taking advantage of this prime opportunity. Mobile phishing is on the rise. The classic phishing emails are now being crafted to be opened on your mobile device. I also recently learned that when an attacker SMS or text messages you a malicious link, the FBI calls it smishing. I've been smished. We've continued to see a lot more mobile security threats. Checkpoint found that about 97% of organizations have recently faced mobile application security threats. While you and your company may not have been breached yet, you should become more aware of the current landscape. Mobile attacks are on the rise, mobile apps are vulnerable, and mobile security awareness is weak. Think again when you see these billboards that try to convince you that your bit data is safe. Apple paid a lot of money for these nice designs in real estate to make you complacent with your mobile security. In reality, a month ago, your company forced you or should have forced you to update your iPhone because Apple had a zero day that allowed attackers to hack activists and have near complete access to their device, including personal data, photos, messages, and even location. To paint a picture of the state of web and mobile security, imagine you just bought a house and you care a lot about the security of your house. On a limited budget, you want to secure just the front of your house so you think front door. You buy yourself an extremely fancy lock, top of the line of all the bells and whistles, including a biometric scanner. But you just leave the garage door as is. You don't even consider the security of your garage door, even when it covers a larger surface area of the front of your house, and it's how you frequently enter and leave your home. We can see this analogy in finance and healthcare companies. These two industries have a lot of sensitive data and here to strict security compliance frameworks. In finance, an InterTrust report from 2021 found that 77% of financial apps have at least one serious vulnerability that could lead to a data breach. In healthcare, a study from June 2021 found that 71% of tested medical apps have at least one high-level security vulnerability. We place a lot of trust in these financial and healthcare companies to value the security of our credit card information, personal identity, health conditions, or even our precise location, yet our mobile apps are in a dangerous state. Now is the time to take action to secure your mobile applications. So hopefully I've convinced you, we should start talking about how you can start a mobile security program, even if you have no mobile security experience. 
The first step is super easy. Talk to your mobile developers. Your goal is to figure out what your mobile developers think about security and how secure the mobile applications are. Their perception matters a lot. You should ask about the security maturity of the mobile application. This would be questions along the lines of, what does security look like for your mobile apps? What are the biggest challenges you face when it comes to securing mobile applications? How often are security features developed? If the mobile apps were to get act, how would it happen? And is there anything that scares you? You should also ask what your mobile developers are doing to actively secure the app. What guidelines or frameworks do they follow? What trainings have they had? What has been their experience working with the security team? Then you should set up conversations with the people who work with the mobile developers, quality assurance, project managers, and engineering managers. QA engineers know the testing and coverage of the app and know the app intimately. They will be able to give you the input on security and maybe even suggest the QA and security partner up. PMs know what projects they're working on and EMs have an idea of what their challenges are and at a high level, what features are being built. Most importantly, these individuals will know how involved security is. Some of the answers might range for, I'm not sure, to dead bones are buried in front of the church, to we've got security handled, apps are sandbox and users are updating their phone. This next step is to validate assumptions and perceptions by assessing your mobile application. This section is meant for someone who has no mobile security experience. There are a lot of free resources out there so that you can start to help your mobile developers as soon as tomorrow. I'm going to walk through the resources, what you can learn from them, and what they look like. I have a slide at the end of this section that you can screenshot with links to all the mentioned resources. So step A is read Android and Apple security best practices. These guides will help you gain a better understanding of the mobile ecosystem and specifically what you and your developers should be doing. This is set up a foundation for you to understand mobile security. This is what the Android security best practices look like. You should read all these sections as they include how to build good security practices and key areas to look at in an Android application. The Apple documentation is a little different as it has more to do specifically with security features. This is still important as these are the features you should have. B is to start testing your mobile applications now that you've read some material and laid a foundation. OWASP has created a mobile security checklist that you can step through each item and check if your mobile app has it or not. These instructions are super clear and include what tools to download and what commands to use. Additionally, the testing guidelines will continue to build your mobile security foundation by explaining why you are testing for a requirement and the security implications. This is what the checklist looks like. It's pretty bulky, but there's a lot of components in a mobile application. Kind of on the left side, you'll see different requirements that you'll be testing for, and then you can either check the box if you have it or not. And then on the right, you have links for how to test for each of these requirements. Those links will take you over to the OWASP testing guide, which will give you that foundation of why you're testing for these requirements, what's needed and what exactly you're looking for, and specific instructions to dynamically and statically test your applications. So you've had a busy couple of weeks reading and testing. Now you just want someone or something to confirm that what you found is real or that you didn't miss anything. And you can run free tools like MobSF, which is an automated static dynamic analysis tool that you can upload the APK or IPA file to get an even clearer idea of what your vulnerabilities are. So this is an example of what mob SF looks like. You would upload those files and you get an output that looks like this with kind of what's going on in your application. So you have a higher level understanding and also uh, the vulnerabilities that exist. So we use the free tools, but it may have had a few false positives. So this is when you can reach out to vendors. There are a lot of vendors in the mobile security space, some better than others. Reach out and conduct POCs. Not only will you be able to get an idea of what the vulnerabilities enterprise tools are finding, but you can also start to figure out what tools you'd like to introduce to your SDLC. You can also hire pen testers to test your mobile apps if you feel unsure about the quality of your manual tests and or tools. As promised, here's a slide you can screenshot with all the resources. Under section A, you've got Android and Apple security best practices. Section B has the OWASP mobile testing guide and checklist. And C is the link to mob SF. Now that you have an idea of what your risks are, what your top vulnerabilities are, now it's time to figure out what to do next. You're not going to be able to fix all these issues yourself, so you need to continue building your relationship with mobile developers. A lot of application or product security teams is about social and or political capital. Get the developers on your side by joining them. 
The general advice when trying to get along with developers also applies to mobile developers. Things like continuing to attend their meetings and being integrated with their team. This helps build your signal and build out an agenda, figure out what they're working on, build that trust, present on exciting topics that are relevant to mobile developers. So when there's a new iOS software update or an Android platform update, talk to them about what was highlighted in that security section. Get them thinking about security a lot more often and post articles in their Slack channel. They want someone to talk about an exploit or a vulnerability that was in the news. Give them some really cool context. Now let's get into the specifics about mobile developers. First, think like a mobile developer. If you're testing the mobile applications or replicating vulnerabilities with the developers, use the IDE that mobile developers use. So Xcode for iOS and Android Studio for Android. Then it's understanding the differences between Android and iOS. The OAS checklist is split up between Android and iOS, and this will help you build the knowledges on the uh, build your knowledge on the differences between the two. So there's App Store for iOS and Play Store for uh, Android. There's also an emulator versus a simulator. This is a virtual device that you would use to test your application. If you don't have a physical device, you'd use an emulator for Android and a simulator for iOS. And they both have their different limitations and their different benefits. Local storage is also different for applications in Android and iOS. Not only is the location different, but also where things can be stored and what they're called are different as well. iOS uses Keychain and Android uses Key Store to store sensitive data. Broadcast permissions are something that's unique to Android and broadcast receivers are components in an Android application that listen to broadcast from other applications, systems, or the application itself. So if your phone is boot booting up in an Android, you can send a signal to your application. Um, user preferences, where you store them, how you store them, deciding if they need to be encrypted or not are different for both Android and iOS. And each platform has different protections. Some are easier on Android, some are easier on Android, uh, some are harder. Uh, there are different examples, one being that uh, if you want to prevent sensitive information on different screens from being screenshotted automatically, it's really, really easy on iOS and really difficult on Android. Sometimes you have to prevent people from screenshotting because iOS doesn't give you that, or Android doesn't give you that capability to uh, easily determine if it's a sensitive screen. Lastly, you want to create trainings and secure coding guidelines for mobile. Mobile and web are so different. What you see in the OWASP top 10 is different from mobile. Um, mobile vulnerabilities require a stolen phone or an attacker to have access to a jailbroken or rooted device. This changes the attack path and how you would prevent vulnerabilities. All the differences between Android and iOS will also affect how you create coding guidelines. You want to work with your developers on understanding the types of attacks that happen in the mobile space and the protections that are offered out of the box to create meaningful training and coding guidelines. You want to give them the time of day that they weren't getting. So expanding on the theme that web and mobile security is different, it's important to know the unique protections and the limitations that Android and iOS offer. In your interviews with your developers, they might mention that they have some confidence in the security of the mobile apps because of the application sandboxing. This is when applications are isolated from each other to prevent malicious attackers and apps from accessing another app's files, preferences, and network resources. In theory, your app would be protected and the security team can just go to happy hour early, but application sandboxing doesn't fully protect your application or user. You can still have unencrypted communications. There's data stored outside of the sandbox environment. For instance, sensitive data may live in logs, the keyboard cache, or the folder where your phone stores a screenshot every time you switch apps. Web views, which are those pop-ups inside of an app, kind of like an iframe that allows you to see the content in your browser, are becoming increasingly popular but exist outside of this sandboxing environment. Lastly, apps or users are still susceptible to spoofing or phishing attacks, which the sandbox doesn't provide any protections against. Your developer might also bring up platform security, and platform security has come a really long way. Android and iOS, with every new platform update, make security the default option for developers. Apple and Google have made it incredibly easy to stay up to date on best security practices because they deprecate insecure functions and create more secure functions for developers. For instance, Apple developers used to only have two options when it came to accessing a user's data, such as their photos or their locations. It was you had access to everything or nothing at all. Apps that now use PhotoKit in iOS 14 give developers much more options. Does your app need to edit or add new photos or does it just need access to view your photos? Does your app always need access, even if it's running in the background, or can we limit access to when the user explicitly authorizes it or when the app is in use? 
Apple has made it easier for developers to get access to only what they need when they need it. For Android's developers used to only be able to store files in an external directory that any app could access. Android 11 and API level 30 introduce scope storage enforcement, which creates an app specific directory on external storage. Additionally, apps have to be submitted for review to the App Store and Play Store. Both stores monitor for abuse and do their best to take down malicious applications or applications that are not compliant with best security and privacy practices. These stores also have target level requirements that require minimum versions of iOS and Android to be met. This means you can't submit a new update on an app that's on iOS 6 or Android 6 for the newest phones. These are really big wins for mobile security, but mobile developers still need your support. The developers might not have had time or prioritized building these new features and secure defaults. You might see developers using the legacy or deprecated functions that are insecure and not recommended by the newest platform. And the target rate requirements are usually a version or two behind the minimum requirement, and mobile security can help push for those new features. Developers might lean on the stores to confirm if their app is secure, but they need you as their security advocate. These stores are not monitoring and checking for all the requirements that is rooted in this guide by Android. You should always practice defense and death as there are new zero days all the time. Limit the severity and impact of an attack by ensuring that you have multiple layers of defense. Lastly, your developers might point out that mobile attacks only apply to jailbroken or rooted phones. I do want to clarify that this is not the regular user that you're worried about using a root device, it's the attacker. They're able to look at your source code and see the inner workings of the app to find the flaws and attack your users. And not all mobile attacks require a rooted phone, some attackers can just happen on a jail device. Some people like to just add jailbreak prevention to their mobile apps, but don't always rely on these as your only defense mechanism. A determined and motivated attacker will find a bypass and they're released constantly. Lastly, defense and death is important when it comes to mobile security. So while Android and iOS offer a lot of unique un protections, please understand their limitations and continue having these conversations with your developers. Now it's the fun part. You can start securing your mobile applications. You'd create a mobile security agenda by identifying your top risks, reducing and eliminating those risks, and then building out your SCLC by conducting threat models, code reviews, and deploying automated tools. And so this is very similar to how you would protect a web application. This is the exact same for mobile applications. So mobile attacks are on the rise. In conclusion, we have to be wary about what's happening in the mobile security space. And so once you are concerned about your mobile security, it's four easy steps to secure your mobile applications, talk to your mobile developers, assess your mobile application, build those relationships with your mobile developers, continue having those conversations, learning more about mobile security and becoming their go-to expert when it comes to mobile security, and then start securing your mobile applications. Great. Um, I'd like to point out that Twilio segment is hiring. We have a booth, so come over, ask us any questions. I'll also be there too, attending tomorrow. If you have any questions that you'd like to ask me more specifically about this talk, uh, but I have a few minutes remaining to talk about questions. Great. Well, I'll be at the booth uh, tomorrow, and Twilio Segment has a booth with lots of security engineers. If you're interested in talking to us more about security in general, um, if you're interested in talking to me about mobile security, uh, happy to talk. Um, please also reach out through any like social media, like LinkedIn. I'm always available to talk. And thank you all for attending. <laughs>